What is up, brothers and sisters? It's Jay Campbell, and you're listening to the Jay Campbell Podcast. Join me for regular deep dives with amazing beings whose work is manifesting a golden age. And remember, you create your reality by your focused thoughts, conscious words, and intentional actions. Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. Hey guys, what is going on? Of course, it's Jay Campbell, the founder of the Jay Campbell Podcast. I still am not used to saying that. And I'm very <laughs> excited today to be joined in studio by my really, really good friend, Ryan Smith, Executive Vice President, among many other titles, of TaylorMade Compounding slash Pharmaceuticals. Ryan, man, how are you, brother? Doing good. Uh, thanks for having me. You know, come full circle. You gave me my first podcast, and now you're my first podcast for two diagnostic. Exactly, man. I love you. So, so anyway, so let's talk about that. So real quick, um, what is true diagnostic? So the purpose of this podcast for all of you guys out there today is to understand how this company is literally going to change the space. If you're on my email newsletter, which many of you guys are, I wrote something about it about 10 days ago. I mentioned true diagnostic, true age. I talked a little bit about the tech. Ryan's going to talk about it today. But, you know, just before I even start running my mouth on it, talk about kind of your hero's journey and like how you discovered how you created this company and what led you to do this. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the first I ever heard about biological age was, was a little over three years ago. I mean, so I was still pretty new in, you know, the peptide space, the compounding space, the integrative health space. So, but I sat down at dinner and talked to a couple of physicians and one uh, from UCLA who, who mentioned this thing called Grimage to me. Um, and, and this was basically a, a test that, you know, I, I'd read about before for, you know, insurance companies who were basically trying to predict when people were going to die, right? People, so looking at, you know, DNA markers and, and predicting death. And I thought that was pretty cool, you know, and in addition to that, I also heard about uh, the other group interested in was forensic testing, right? People trying to find DNA at crime scenes and being able to tell what age the person at the crime scene was. And, and these were pretty cool genetic tricks, right? You know, I thought, oh, hey, you know, it's, it's awesome that you'd be able to tell that much from the DNA, um, you know, and, that we previously had. And, and so at that point, it was just a, like I said, a cool trick for me. Um, I didn't really realize, you know, the particular health implications in, until the, around September of last year. Um, and that's when uh, a really, really interesting article came out, uh, another UCLA article, actually, from a, a doctor named Greg Fahey, he was sort of the primary author. And uh, uh, what it showed is that metformin, uh, DHEA, and growth hormone actually were able to reduce what they call this epigenetic aging rate. Um, and the reason that was exciting is because that was directly tied to morbidity and mortality. And so um, once I heard that, my whole thought process on, on this space changed a little bit. I, I started to see it as you know, one objective metric, you know, obviously, you know, I'm speaking to the choir, but, uh, you know, a lot of patients can get caught up in, hey, what am I looking at? Like, what are my hormone levels? What are my triglycerides? And it gets a little bit confusing. And so many people get turned off by that. You know, uh, the people who are not really into their own health are just overwhelmed, I think. And I saw this as, you know, a single metric, which could be tied to morbidity and mortality and, and be sort of a game changer in how we approach preventative medicine. You know, this is a metric you can, you can try and improve when you're not sick. Uh, it keeps you out of the doctor's office. If you reduce the epigenetic aging rate by seven years, uh, you reduce morbidity and mortality, uh, or sorry, morbidity by 50%. Um, and so half of the people in the world are, are, are not sick anymore. Uh, if you can do this with everybody. And so it, it became a hugely powerful thing to me. And, and, and honestly, my first, my first response was, yeah, how, do the, how would the peptides affect this, right? right, um, right. And, and so at that point, I was like, I've got to find out someone who's doing this so we can see how you know, some of the mitochondrial peptides work, how these growth hormone secretagogues work, and, and are we actually reducing morbidity and mortality? Because that, that was a really exciting part. So I just have to go back to something you said because you made me laugh. But, uh, dude, the doctors don't know how to read any of these things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Right? And, and not to mention the variation between labs, right? I mean, uh, I hate to say it. <laughs> no, it's totally true because we always laugh, right? Like when we're at the conferences and how the docs walk up and they're asking questions and then you start mentioning things like you talk about or I talk about and they just gloss over and you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> You should sell this. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this works. Um, okay, yeah, so let's talk a little bit about this. Go a little deeper, though, obviously. So yeah. why is biological age actually really important? Yeah, so, you know, biological age has been around for a long, long time. I mean, people have been, 
you know, they tried to make it, it's, you know, even in the fifties, they had a metric where they would subtract the amount of packs you smoked a day, uh, you know, uh, f from your health. Right. And it, it was meant to be, it was meant to be sort of a, a, a surrogate measure of health, right. You know, not chronological age, but, but how healthy are you functioning, right? How, how healthy are you as an individual? And, and, you know, you and I have seen this, you, you know, in the people that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, the people who are really engaged in their own health care are living different lives at different ages than their, their peers. And so, we, you know, uh, the biological age is a useful thing. Um, the biggest issue is that there's never been a really a good metric to do it. Um, you know, a lot of people have done it through, uh, like I said, different calculations on different types of testing, hormone levels, you know, they, they've had some really complex calculations, but um, the reason that this is so groundbreaking is because of the specificity of this, right? This is, this is something, uh, by looking at these methylation markers on the DNA, you can get very, very precise in in your calculation of these things. You know, I, I always throw out this quote by the Dr. Horvath who said it's more likely, uh, he's, Dr. Horvath's probably gonna win the Nobel Prize for some of this stuff. He's sort of the, the founder and creator of, of this as an idea. He says it's more likely that, uh, you know, the earth is hit by an asteroid and everyone dies tomorrow than his test is wrong, which is, you know, uh, not, not even a, 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 for him, it's not even, you know, it's a statistical claim, right? You know, th these tests are super, super accurate. Whereas they used to not predict aging or, you know, any type of health outcome that much. Now they're actually very, very specific. And so, you know, his Grimage clock is, is one of the first ever death predictors. And by using these methylation markers, you can really get a good idea of when people are gonna die and when they're gonna get sick. Um, and, you know, with not sick is in terms of, you know, uh, COVID-19, right? Or So you can get a really good idea of, of the correlations of these things because the data and the math is so good. It's funny because a lot of people say to me, who don't know me or just see me from my podcasting, you know, and they're like, dude, you're almost 50 years old, right? Cause I am, I'm 49. I'll be 50. You know, I'm actually in my 50th year. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's but crazy. it's like, you know, people, know right. No, yeah. but people see me yeah. and they're like, dude, you look 15 years younger. Right. Yeah. Because again, you know, just to, to, to emphasize what you're saying is I've been on metformin for literally close to 20 years. Right. So as you just said at the very beginning of this podcast, you know, it's a marker that is doing all sorts of things to literally enhance my biological functioning. My biosystems are probably the biosystems of someone in their twenties, right? Now, obviously I take care of myself. I train, I hormonally optimize. Uh, I also eat clean. I keep my insulin signal low, but you know, I think my audience, the people that, you know, purchase from tailor made pharmaceuticals, the people that are going to be involved in this and are going to get in this and you're going to teach you, tell you guys how to do that by the end of this podcast. But dude, this is big time. Like yeah. this is no joke. Like I remember when you reached out to me and you're like, dude, I got something for you. Right. Like I yeah. on this in the background and I was like, when I hear that from you, I'm like, okay. Cause like, you know, I get a lot of people that say, bro, we got to <laughs> you put me on your podcast, you know, and then tell me what it is. And I'm like, right. But like, yeah. this is no joke. So I want you to really start drilling down and let's talk about like how this is going to work, how this is, well, first off, you're really close to putting this out into the world now, correct? Absolutely. We, uh, we've already shipped out kits. Uh, you should actually be receiving yours tomorrow. So uh, awesome. we'll put some, obviously, uh, you, you know, I, I was expecting some good results there, but, um, but, but yeah, these things are out there, you know. Um, we, we, I can talk a lot about the process. I think it's important. Yeah, let's talk because, about that. Let's talk about that right yeah, now. So how's this going to work? Yeah. Well, so, uh, you know, the, the number one thing is going back to sort of my journey and why I got involved is, um, you know, I didn't initially start out to, you know, uh, to, to raise money and, and create a new business venture. That, that was not something I, sure. you know, I didn't think I had anything to add to the space. I, I really didn't. Um, because not my area of expertise. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it was just a, a really cool thing that I was interested in. And, and I saw the potential because I, you know, I just like you mentioned, this is a big thing. I mean, this is going to win a Nobel Prize or probably required by insurance companies, you know, twice or three times a year just to, to help people know where they're at, to get an idea of, 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 of their health in a, in a single snapshot. And so this is going to be, you know, a, a revolutionary thing to healthcare. And, right. and so I got involved just to, to see if I could validate the interventions that we're that, you know, you and I live on a daily basis, exactly. right? Um, right. And, and so, uh, but whenever I got involved, you know, everyone who's doing it is, is really trying to do it just to sell a test. And, and that is, that is not where I, I mean, 
I, I see the utility of offering this as a, as a test, but, and that's what we're doing, but I also see the utility of what this can be, right? right. I think that this should be, you know, what, what, you know, uh, what Theranos should have been, right? Where you can get a single blood print. Wait a minute, we right? got uh, said Theranos on the show. <laughs> delete, delete. <laughs> yeah, cut that. I cut that. No, but, uh, <laughs> but, but yeah, again, the idea was that, you know, you'd have this, this state-of-the-art diagnostic testing that's available at a point of care system and every CVS you could have, uh, you could have this test, which could tell you so much about your health and be right. inexpensive and cheap. And that is where this can go because I mean, there's data now that we can predict how much you, you, you know, nicotine tests are a common thing that employers do to determine insurance risk, right? We can now not just predict if, you, you know, if, if you have in, nicotine in your system, we can predict if how many packs you've smoked in your entire lifetime, we can tell how often you've exercised, you know, and these things are important for, for not for life insurance. I want to stay away from that world as much as possible, but, but for interventions in health, right? we can keep people healthier whenever we know how to better treat them. And, and this gives us a, a lot more information. We can, we can come up with tests for Alzheimer's risk and intervene early. We can come up with, um, you know, can- cancer risk in interviewing early every single cancer test which is a stage zero cancer test these liquid biopsies they call it all of them deal with epigenetics um all of them are looking at epigenetic markers and so uh you know this is a this is a form of diagnostic that i think will replace um you know your typical blood testing or saliva testing it is uh its specificity and and its power is uh is boundless and, and will be part of every diag you know every clinician's um eventual treatment plan. And so that's why I get so excited about it is because, uh, you know, it's way more than just a biological age test. But right now, the biological age test is super important, and super valuable. But eventually, you know, from one drop of blood, we'll be able to tell you a lot what, you know, how what you should be eating to extend your lifespan, what you should be eating to reduce cancer risk, um, what cancers you're most predisposed to, all of these different things from just a single test. And that's really, really exciting. Honestly, this is magic, because as you and I know, we've been talking about this for a couple of years, and now this is here. But the reality is, is that the smart guys in the hormone optimization space, the optimization space with peptides, all of it, whatever it is that we do, I don't even know how to label this anymore. <laughs> we always said that you should get this diagnostic before you even go down the route of hormones or peptides to see, you know, what you got going on uh, genetically and epigenetically, right? Because again, we know, you know, the ghost in your genes is an amazing documentary, but we know that DNA is not this hammer that we were once told, well, you know, you're so young, but when I was told, when I was growing up, my dad was like, you only got your genes. And some guys were born with really high end. I forget what the real high quality was, I think. And some people get Rustler from Kmart. (laughs) That's what my dad used to say. And so like back then, that's what they understood. They understood the inflexibility and the rigidity of your genetic code. But you and I both know, obviously in the last 10 years, that's all been broken. And we know that lifestyle is the ultimate determinant. So, so realistically, this is, again, as you said, and this is how this needs to be shaped, this is almost mandatory now mm-hmm. as a pre, you know, as an adjuvant slash as a pre-authorization before you even walk down the other path, because this is going to tell you what to avoid and what to mm-hmm. accentuate. Definitely. And, and the, the beauty of it is that we're just at the beginning of that. Exactly. You know, more and more information is going to be coming out where and we're going to get really specific recommendations, uh, you know, and, and that's, and finally, you know, we're not just looking at blood ranges, right? We're, you know, ranges. Um, and we're not looking at, we're looking at very, very precise measurements. And, and that is, that has a lot of power, I think. And so, uh, yeah, absolutely right. And going back to a little bit of how it's done, uh, you know, I, I sort of glossed over that part. But, um, you know, it, it starts with, uh, you know, a simple blood stick. You don't even need much blood. You need, you know, uh, around 250 microliters. And then uh, at that point, we would, purify the DNA. Um, and then we would do what they call a bisulfate conversion, which looks at those methylation markers on your DNA. And, and going back to what you said, you know, it is now, you know, everyone's debating nature versus nurture, right? And we know now it's, it's leaning a lot more nurture. Absolutely. There's some really cool things, I mean, still coming out about about generational um, changes in the epigenome, right? Uh, you know, if, if my mother was, ex- you know, had trauma in her life, it's actually reflected in my epigenetics, exactly. um, which is, yeah, it's a crazy thing, you know, how, in, you know, how do dolphins know how to swim when they're born, right? It's it pr- imprinted on them through epigenetic changes. And, and those aren't always methylation, sometimes it's acetylation, sometimes it's hitstone changes. But, uh, but you know, we're, we can learn a lot about, uh, about things and, and we can even change those things. So you're not, you know, you're not just your DNA as, as you know, as, as, uh, as you mentioned. And so 
once we get that, we, uh, we look at a large, large portion of your DNA. We're looking at over uh, 900,000 spots on your DNA, which is uh, really important to make it more than just a test. Like, you know, most of these other tests are looking you know, at, at 2,000 spots on the DNA. We're looking at 900,000. Um, and so what we're going to be able to do from that is, is you know, predict risk of Alzheimer's. We're going to be able to do all these other really cool tests um, we have a couple in the the the, the pipeline, such as telomere testing. Right. Um, you know, for being able to predict telomere length even better than Western blot. Um, you know, being able to uh, you know measure the burden of senescence. Um, so by knowing these things, you're able to sort of say, hey, this is where I should go, and 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 have a really really high level of confidence. I mean, we're talking the level of statistical power in this is really where it's all created. Most of these algorithms and all this science was created by you know bioinformatics statisticians, right? It's not. Uh, not necessarily MDs, it, it, the people who are just buried in the data and looking at high degrees of statistical significance and, and, and computer learning, a lot of AI and, you know, as, as much as that word is thrown around, the, you know, you can't look at 900,000 spots in the DNA and, and turn it into a clinical outcome without some really good computers and math. And, uh, and, and that's part of the process. That word quantum computers. And I love that word too, bioinformatics. <laughs> <laughs> it, heard, yeah, it's it, talking about a buzzword, bro. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I was trying to stay away from AI, but I. But I oh, it's okay. I mean, you already brought up Theranos and Elizabeth Holmes. <laughs> By the way, is she in the hole? Did they throw her in the hole? To be honest, I don't know. I watched I that either. documentary, but I. Uh, but I'm not sure what the the final outcome was. Yeah, me neither. I was actually going to Google her while you were talking. Okay, so let's talk about yeah. because I think people are really truly going to be mind blown that like how actually affordable this yeah. actually is to get this level of information. And again, as you know, the people that most of the people that follow me are geeks, right? Like they really yeah. care about their health. They're very sophisticated. They stop at nothing. You know, if it's this cost, it doesn't matter if I'm going to find out if I'm going to not have Alzheimer's, if I'm susceptible yeah. to having Alzheimer's and I'm going to build up amyloid plaque by the time I'm 50, Ryan J, what the, F do I need to do to prevent that from happening? So again, this is, like I said, bro, this is next level. This is literally yeah. singularity technology in advance of it even happening, right? I mean, that's kind of yeah. where we're at with this. A absolutely. And you know, being on the cutting edge, there's really only one negative of it. And that, that is that we, you know, uh, a lot of the, the protocols to fix some of these things are not thoroughly vetted or value, validated right now the, the fate, yeah <laughs> exactly you know the the fahey trial with the growth hormone the growth hormone metformin and dha that was really the proof of concept study that right. you can reverse these things that, that right. your your epigenetic age can be changed and and that was a really cool thing but you know we're starting to learn more about diet and other interventions and so one of the things is again the process is you prick your finger you drop it in the tube you send it to us um, in about you know two to three weeks, we send you a report back, which is very very comprehensive. It goes over. Uh, it's really a snapshot of all of the literature in the space, and and this thing is growing and changing rapidly. But the good news is, by doing it now, you can get a lot of updates, right? You can stay on the cutting edge. I mean, imagine being at, you know at the beginning of blood testing when it came out, or the beginning of you know DNA testing or genome sequencing when it came out. This is sort of where we're at. Um, it, but it doesn't mean that we're we're powerless. We still have a lot of really good things to. Uh, and recommendations to sort of change what you can do. Um, and so if you look at other competitors who are doing this, again, not only are we doing a lot more spots on DNA, uh, but but our, our report is comprehensive. It's around 50 pages compared to, you know, five to seven of what other people are doing. And so, it, it, you know, this is made for people who want to be in charge of their own health, right? And, and, uh, and we have some really good um, contributors, a great scientific advisory board. We've got, um, you know, uh, a great research partners. We have right now over uh, over 13 IRBs going on from everything nice. from bariatric surgery to uh, the effect of NAD plus, the effect of thymus and alpha one, um, you know, the effect of of diet and exercise and different variants of that. Um, and so we uh, we definitely want to create m more points of information where people can uh, actually affect their lifestyle and, and lead better and healthier lives. And and this is a metric that is just so powerful because it can actually do that. You know, uh, I mean, everyone can see the anecdotal effects of, you know, hormone replacement therapy, but whenever you can actually make it to a statistic where you're saying, hey, doing hormone replacement therapy will, you know, reduce your risk of death by this much, we're going to be able to have that information. Okay. And that is so powerful. Okay, yeah. so I got a lot of questions in real quick, and then you can tell people how they can actually get this right now. Obviously, <laughs> this is a game changer, but, you know, my, so my first concern, not a concern, it's a question is just like, okay, so how are you going to integrate this with 
optimization healthcare physicians? Because obviously every single fucking one of them has to have this in their practice. So what is your guys, you know, from a scalability standpoint, like how are you going to integrate with physicians in this capacity? Absolutely. So we're encouraging physicians uh, to stock it in their office. You know, it, it's a it's a really easy test to stock because it's just a simple bloodless blood blood lancet and a collection tube. Um, and so you know they can stock it in there. Um, and then most of the work is done on our end uh, through uh, through the machines you see behind me and and, and you know another floor of, of these. Um, but uh, you know, and so what happens is these physicians are going to be really helping us come up with the, the ways to test in the future. They're giving us a bunch of data points, such as what therapy the patient's on, right. you know, uh, doing time points. You know, this is, as you mentioned, you know, it's, uh, you can really change these metrics. And so you're not just your DNA, right? You don't just sit back and, and say, I, I, you know, these are the cards that I was dealt. You can test this, you know, every six months, every year, and really see how much progress you made. In, in the Fahey uh, Growth Hormone Metformin DHA study that I keep mentioning, they were able to reduce their epigenetic age by 2.5 years. That's I mean, insane, um, that's, insane. that's crazy. And that was, uh, that was nine patients over the course of really a year and a half. And as they were going past a year and a half, the slope was going even larger. They were going even more faster at decelerating their age. And, and as I mentioned, 2.5 years with just those three products and that's doing nuts. that seven, yeah, in seven years being reducing morbidity by 50%. I mean, it's not that difficult to do. And so, um, or at least from that proof of concept, that's what we're to assume along with, you know, the right diet and some of the other things that, that everyone are doing in this space, you know, you can really have a population impact that can, that can change people's lives. And so, um, so, you know, this is, uh, so all these doctors are helping us get these variables because some doctors like to use, uh, you know, berberine, right. Instead of metformin or right. some, some physicians like to use, uh, you know, the growth hormone secretagogue instead of growth hormone itself. And so we're going to be able to gather all these variables and say, hey, it's looking like, you know, it's looking like tesamorelin might be a, a better option than growth hormone. And then we'll be able to tell everyone from all of our data, hey, this is this is what it's looking at. And then they'll help us come up with these clinical settings to actually affect patient self-care. So, so uh, I mean, again, I, I could talk to you all day, but like, as you and I know, we're going to get this into the marketplace and then you and I are going to come on and do a live broadcast and we're going to yeah. Have people ask, answer, you're going to answer questions. I'll answer questions. Um, it'll be even more epic. Um, but let me just ask this. So at the end of six to eight weeks, I'm trying to think like a customer on the other end and yeah. they get 50 pages of absolutely amazing data. Is there anything going to be in there that are going to make them go jump off a cliff or drive their car really fast? <laughs> <into a break? laughs> you, you know, you know, at the moment, we, we do have a morbidity <laughs> calculator. Uh, so, you know, the, our version of, of Grimage is in development. We hope to publish on that uh, by the end of the year. Um, and so, for right now, we're not doing death prediction, right? We're not going to say I, yes. I'm laughing because hey. I'm thinking <laughs> some of these people are going to get a big giant red X at the bottom that says, you're <laughs> fucked. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, yeah, we, we, we will be careful about that. We'll make sure, you know, I'm... I, I, you know, we, one of our biggest fears is, you know, no, no one probably wants to know when they want to die, right? That's <laughs> so, what I'm, I mean, honestly, dude, you yeah. know, I get that all the time. I mean, that's a bit, you said it, you know, you talked about transgenerational trauma and that fear component that men and women, mostly men, it, it's funny, right? Because like when you talk to really accomplished, successful men, and I do all the time, yeah. you know, they're like, you know, dude, if I die, who's going to take care of so-and-so? You know, I got to... Yeah. $60,000 a month operation and blah, 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 blah. And it's always that. So it's like, I get yeah. some of these CEO, you know, C-level executives getting this back and they're like, oh, fuck, you know? Yeah. But, but you're right. I mean, at the end of the day, the information, the data is so crucial because you never had this before. None of us have ever had this on planet Earth, at least yeah. in this epic, to understand this kind of, you know, preventative measures to take and to literally switch our epigenetic factors so that we can like take advantage of knowing this. And again, I, I just keep thinking exactly. of how doctors are just literally throwing shit against a wall and they start a guy on testosterone and HCG and this and that, and this and that, and they have no clue. And now this is yeah. going to just literally soften the blow and they're going to be like, Oh no, I can't get them on that. I mean, dude, this is, yeah. this is revolutionary, you know? Yeah. Stuff. It, I mean, I, I definitely think so. And that's why, you know, that's why I'm so invested in it. This is uh you know, it, it just, it spans all of medicine and all of health and, and, uh, and it makes, it takes control back, right? You take control into your own hands again. Um, and, and, you know, I, I could talk all day about why aging should be considered a disease, right? Um, you know, all the things that are associated with aging, you know, again, speaking to the choir here, but, 
but hopefully this will also frame traditional medicine practitioners in that mindset as well that that aging should be dealt with as a preventative medicine disease and and that you need to get ahead of aging in order to improve your patient's quality of life and to prevent disease and and i'm hoping that that these things which are objective measures of health will will start to transition and, and become more than just you know the functional medicine space the integrated medicine space and become medicine right and that, that's where i think that the, the beauty of this is is that uh it, it can affect every patient in the world okay so the 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 big drum roll like what is the best way for people to get on this bandwagon and obviously i'm going to be an affiliate yeah. you know full disclosure yeah. for everybody, of course um, but what is the best way for them right now? Because this podcast will run. Today is the 12th. So it'll be the 18th is when this will break across YouTube and then all of next week. And then so then the week after you and I will then jump on a call. So people have had a week to digest this in the marketplace. But what is the best way for them to go online and to get this? Yeah, so the best way to get it right now is actually through Jay's website. You know, it's going to be uh, at jcampbell.com. You know, you can go and, 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 and per- buy some stuff there. If you go to truediagnostic.com, we have a ton of information. If you want to learn more, you know, more information is coming about, uh, out about this every day. You know, things like how to fasting affect this, things like how does hormone replacement affect this, things like how does infections, right, in, in affect this. Um, and so, so if you want to buy a test, I recommend going to Jay. Traditionally, they're uh, they're they're 375. With, with Jay, we're going to be offering it for 350. Um, and again, this is a test that will continue to give you information. It you know just like you know 23andMe would update you on the newest uh, relatives, we're going to update you on the newest data. And so this is a you know a snapshot, right? We recommend doing this maybe once a year, maybe once every two years if you if you want to be a little bit more relaxed about it. Um, but uh, but this is something that you want to keep coming back to to make sure you're trending in the right direction. Um, one of the things we always look at is, you know, your, yeah, go ahead. Oh, no, no, go ahead. Keep going. I'll, I'll, I'll finish your yeah. Well, one of the things we always look at is, you know, your chronological age versus your biological age, right? If, you know, if you're 35 years of age and you have a 40 year old biological age, you know that that's time for some intervention, right? You, you know, you definitely want to, you want to affect that. Um, and actually, one of the other things that our company does that sort of no one else does is we look at uh, the difference between intrinsic and extrinsic epigenetic aging. That's a really complicated topic, but uh, it's in the report uh, if anyone's interested. And we have a lot of web information on that on our website as well. But, but we do a lot of really unique dives to make sure that you know exactly what variables you need to change in order to live a healthier life. So just the only question I had, because obviously it's on the website, I've been looking at it. So there's true age and then there's tr- true telomere. Is, did you want to like differentiate those two? Absolutely. So true age right now is the biological age measurement. It, it predicts how old your body is functioning. And, and, uh, and that's uh, obviously a very, very important metric. Um, you know, the true telomere is going to use the same DNA markers, um, but it's highly correlated to telomere length. You know, there are a couple of interesting things about telomere length is that uh, it's not as associated with age as people think. Um, right. And it's, you know, also t- tissue dependent. It, it seems to be more of a measure of, of replication of the cells rather than, you know, age or, or, or physio- physiological function. Um, but it's still an important measurement, you know, even in things like stem cells, for instance, uh, it, it can make a big difference. And so, um, so we're, we also have that metric that that is not uh, out yet, but we'll probably have that in three weeks. Um, and the good news is that if you want that metric, uh, you know, it's going to be very, very inexpensive, because for us, we're, do, we're measuring all the same data points on your DNA. And so um, if you if you get biological agents decide, hey, I want to look at my telomeres as well, it's going to be a fraction of, you know, a 10th of the cost of other telomere tests. Well, so I'm laughing because I'm just thinking to myself, and again, I'm eight myself what do you know 26 27 how old are you again i'm 29 yeah yeah 29. oh shit you're old dude fuck i remember when you were just yeah 20. you're almost 30 bro <laughs> yeah exactly um, <laughs> but no but it's it's crazy because like i think back when they were first mapping the dna the genome and you know i can't think of craig venter by the way true story i played in a men's adult men's basketball league with him. Way back then. <laughs> That's awesome. Claim to fame. Yeah. And obviously you <laughs> anybody, but, but at the time um, it's just so funny how that worked out. But uh, I think of the money that it cost yeah. to truly map the genome and to think now that 350 fucking dollars is going to give you the level of information at a granularity that is it's incalculable. You guys are going to know yeah. everything about your epigenetic and dna right so you're gonna yeah. I mean, you're gonna literally know how to literally right ryan lived to 120 yeah. years yeah I mean, that, that, that's, that's, that's yeah that's the goal and you know i think that uh 
Yeah, I mean, the amount of data you get is just insane. You know, we're, we're looking at by far the largest amount of data, almost a million spots in the DNA, right? But there are 26 million spots in the DNA that have become methylated. Um, and, you know, uh, it's our goal to, to do all of that one day. And, and, um, and hopefully we'll be able to sort of take along everyone for their, on the ride and, 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 and build, you know, a, a level of clinical medicine that, that doesn't exist. And I think that uh, we'll, we'll hopefully we'll definitely do that. Yeah, beautiful. So everybody that's watching this podcast, um, when this runs on YouTube, there will be a link that you can go to and purchase directly through. And obviously, I will receive an affiliate commission. Uh, there will also be links and guideposts to go to the website, which is again, truediagnostic.com, which I highly recommend. And, uh, and once again, as soon as this is in the marketplace and people have questions, because you guys know you will. And obviously, Ryan, with 50 pages of information, you know, there's going to be plenty of data for us to disseminate and go over, you know, as more and more people are exposed. So that will be something that him and I will do, you know, I would say within 10 to 14 days of this thing running, which like I said, is going to be in the marketplace by May 18th, which is a week, less than a week from today. Um, final thoughts, anything else you want to say? I, I just want to say, you know, uh, like I said, uh, for, for everyone listening, Jay did give me my first ever podcast experience. Uh, you know, yeah, it was. Which, by uh, the way, oh, has 15,000 views on YouTube. I oh, really? really? Yeah, it's That's, pretty uh, awesome. Yeah, yeah that, that is pretty awesome. I, you know, and that was, that was, I mean, three years ago, I think now. So, no, I mean, dude, I, it was longer you know, than that. It was 2016. Was it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so it was a while back now. And so uh, one of the things that, that we wanted to do uh, is create something specifically for Jay. Uh, where anyone who, who, you know, has been influenced by his, you know, hormone replacement, um, you know, book or, you know, any of, of the stuff that he does, we wanted to create a specific uh, sort of community. Um, so where everyone can maybe even share some of that data, right? Where, um, you know, for instance, if everyone who uses his, his GHK product, for instance, can, can try it for two weeks and then retest and we'll see where their epigenetic uh, data goes. And so, you know, even within this community, which, you know, is, is a community that's been very kind to me, um, you know, we're going to be able to come up with some really cool data and, uh, and really use everything that we're already doing to, to really come up with some really good outcomes and, and prove to people that all the things that we're doing are, are useful uh, and, and clinical tools, or if they're not, right? You know, I don't think any of us are going to say, hey, you know, this, uh, we're, if we find out new information, we're, we're willing to change. And so uh, we're going to be doing that with Jay as well, and, and it would just be another really cool feature for, for any of the data we collect. But beautiful. So all I can think of is, but Ryan and Jay, you're recommending a metformin. It's a diabetes pill. How many times have you heard that in your life? Why would I? A lot. Diabetes pill. That's awesome. Yeah, dude. right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So, I mean, obviously, we're going to create a community, guys. You're going to have an ability to get this, you know, first. I mean, essentially, like you said, there's competitors. But there isn't competitors when you compare the quantifiable data that you guys are going to be providing. So, again, this is such a next level thing, man. I'm honored that you came on here today. As always, brother, I love you. I truly appreciate you guys and Jeremy, the fine, amazing people at TaylorMade. Uh, we didn't even get into any of the other stuff, which we don't need to talk about. I think most of the people in the community understand that. So let's get this into the marketplace. Let's blow it up. And, uh, you know, again, let's just let's change the world, brother. That's what we're here for. Let's do it. Can't wait for the follow-up. We'll probably know a lot more even by then. Yeah. Awesome, man. Okay, guys, remember, support the amazing people here. The link will be in the bottom. You can go to truediagnostic.com right now and read much more about it. But obviously, the link will be in the podcast and also on my site, which is, Ryan said, is jccampbell.com. So we will see you guys very soon. Ryan and I will join you guys for a live cast. So always remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We'll see you guys soon.